well, to discuss where the SNP finds itself after the first TV debate. We're joined from Edinburgh by Stephen Noon, who's a former senior policy advisor to the SNP government. And here in the studio is Abby Garton Crosby, who's a political editor with The National, and Eddie Barnes, who works for the pro-union think tank, Our Scottish Future, and is a former director of strategy and communications for the Scottish Conservatives. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, Stephen, you were on this very programme on Monday, so you were saying you were looking forward to the debate. Were you surprised at all at the level of division we saw last night? What does it mean for the leadership race? Well, it was certainly good television, I think. Um, feisty is a good word. Uh, conflict's not a bad thing. Um, we can do conflict badly, we can do it well. And I think it's important for the SNP that we address particular issues at this point. Um, there are some big questions about the direction of the party and the future of the movement. Uh, so it is good to have the leadership candidates speaking honestly in these spaces. And Stephen, do you think it damaged any of the candidates' chances? I, I don't think so. I mean, I think uh, if I was advising Kate Forbes, I would say to her to dial it down a little bit. But I think her critique is an important one. I think continuity doesn't cut it. I think if we are going to move forward as a movement, we need to raise to the next level so tone it down, but I think she is arguing in a, a, a good space. OK, um, Abby, you've been speaking to some of the activists today. What have you, what's the mood music been like? Any Anyone changed their minds? People still undecided? What do they make of it? I mean, there's still a lot of people undecided, but obviously a lot of Hamza Yusuf supporters were very angry at the personal attack with of the record that she used, you know, from his time as Justice Secretary and things like that. And there was a lot of anger amongst kind of MSPs and a lot of kind of higher up people in the party that we probably have seen on social media last night. Um, so yeah, I think activists are probably a lot of the ones that I've spoken to are concerned about, you know, the image of the party and, you know, the, the record that they do have in government being trashed. As I think we said during the package, there was a lot of the people at the hustings, you know, they're concerned that this is going to have an impact on the SNP as a whole. So I think that is one of the things that, you know, people are concerned about at the moment. And, you know, Hamza Yusuf's people, but people on Kate Forbes' side have, you know, defended her and said that she should she should have done that and things are going to have to get difficult. So, you know, mm. everybody's split. It's really up in the air at the moment, mm. to be honest. We'll, we'll come back to how this has affected the SNP brand in just a second. But, Eddie, you know, traditionally we're told that voters don't like divided parties. So what do you think the wider public made of last night? I think maybe they thought, where's Nicola? Um, maybe they looked at the three candidates and were wondering who these people are, given that their profile is, is still very low. Um, I think you're right to say that divided parties are, uh, are, are, not, uh, you know, are, are not liked by the public, and I think that was something that came across very clearly last night. For me, as somebody that's you know, not in the, the nationalist movement, uh, I thought one of the problems from last night from the SNP's perspective was that it was very focused on Obviously, you know, naturally, the, the issue of independence, tactics around independence, you know, should it be this, should it be that? And the job of First Minister that one of these people is going to have to take over in, in, a, in, a, sh in a few short weeks is going to be about the day job. It's going to be about the cost of living crisis, about s fixing the NHS, about all the issues that uh, the new First Minister is going to have to deal with. And I think a lot of people would have watched that last night and said, where was the detailed conversation? Where was the detailed debate about that? Because frankly, that is what matters to most people at the moment and not independence. And Eddie, you know, as we said, as, as we saw, there were quite a lot of savage attacks on each other and their records in, in government. Do you think this has damaged the SNP brand at all? Well, I think, I mean, there was a poll out this evening, isn't there, that shows a uh, quite significant uh, downward trend. I don't necessarily think that's down to the division. I think that's partly just to the fact that uh, the public has, has noticed that Nicola Sturgeon is going. Nicola Sturgeon has been this extraordinarily dominant figure, very popular figure, and the fact that she is leaving uh, the post has not clearly got unnoticed. The one thing, the, the proviso I would say to that is that they're still ahead mm -hmm. quite significantly. Uh, ahead of the opposition parties. And I think there is big, a lot of food for thought, therefore, for the opposition parties, for Labour and the Conservatives. It's very easy just to sit back and, and criticise and laugh and enjoy ourselves. And of course, those of us who are opponents w will do that. But I think the message of that poll is actually there's a lot of work now that needs to be done by the opposition parties if they want to be a credible alternative. Um, Stephen, do you think 
um, last night damaged the brand at all? And, you know, Eddie's just mentioned this poll that was carried out before the debate, we should add, and it is just one, it is just one poll. Uh, so the poll is very important for me because I think it reminds us that no one owes us their vote. Uh, and I think politicians can sometimes forget that. So when I, I, I'm just recently back in Scotland, and when I, I left Scotland seven or eight years ago, SNP support was up here and enthusiasm for SNP was here. And when I came back a few months ago, SNP support was a wee bit lower, but enthusiasm was also lower. So there's a gap, I think, between support for the party and the enthusiasm that exists for the party. And I think if we're going to have an honest conversation, we need to speak into that gap. So the record of the party is good. It's not perfect. But to move on to the next stage, which is winning independence, we have to be better. Uh, so for me, that's the space the candidate should speak into. We don't need to worry about a poll. We need to worry about winning the next election, and that's two or three years away. Two or, th two or three years away. So there's time, uh, and I think that's the, the the hope. Have the debate now, and then move forward with a new approach for the election in 2026. Um, um, but do you think that the shine is maybe coming off? Um, the SNP and does this poll perhaps indicate the challenges that the next leader, whoever it will be out of the three, uh, faces in the future? They undoubtedly face challenges. There is a lot going on at the moment, but I do think that you know whoever is going to win this and whoever's going to take this on is going to have to deal with those things. But I don't think that you know at the SNP brand, as Stephen said, there is a lot of enthusiasm for the SNP. There is a lot of support for independence in Scotland. It might not be fifty percent plus one, but there is a big support for that. And I don't think that you know when Nicola Sturgeon took over from Alex Salmond, everybody underestimated her. And eight years later, we can't think of the SNP without her. So whoever comes next, I think. They're going to have an opportunity to put their own brand and their own spin on it and, you know, put their own sort of spin on who the SNP are and to push those progressive policies. So, uh, yeah, sorry. Can divisions be healed? I think they can. I think it's important to have these conversations that, you know, the strategy of independence is discussed because while Eddie said there's a lot of other things going on, people in the SNP who are the people who are voting in this contest want to know what the plan for independence is. You know, we want to, they want to know if it's going to be a de facto referendum, if it's going to be building support or something else. And, you know, mm. the candidates have set that out. So I think it's important that it's had. Yeah, um, Eddie, it's been said that uh, Kate Forbes' attack lines against Hamza Yusuf are a gift to the, the opposition party. So <laughs> how do you see them? Yeah, I'm sure they'll. I'm sure uh, we'll see them used uh, as soon as soon as tomorrow um, at, uh, if I'm right, saying first minister's questions tomorrow, um, because it was it, it was pretty blunt uh, and and pretty personal, and uh, and I'm, I'm, I've seen already the opposition parties have have leapt all over that. Mm. Um, so yes, I think um, it's another example, isn't it? Perhaps that the SNP from you know from the time I've been involved in Scottish politics, uh, it's almost hard to remember a time when they weren't this extraordinarily dominant force. And it feels a little bit loud that they're just coming back down to kind of, to the size of us other mere mortals. But it is, it is a, it, you know, it's, it's new for us all to see them, you know, debating and challenge each other so openly because they've been such a strict, disciplined party machine until now. That's, a, that's exactly right. I mean, it, it is that contrast, and I think, and as I said, the whole thing has, has rather come out of the blue and Nicola Sturgeon resigning was not what we expected at that time to suddenly see this, 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 this monolith that, that, mm. uh, that we all know from the last 10 years suddenly turn on and in on itself is really quite a remarkable spectacle. Yeah, um, and Stephen, um, politics, it feels like it's changing. We're used to this SNP do dominance and, you know, it is, as you said, that they are still uh, ahead. But do you think we're witnessing uh, the beginning of an end of an era, Stephen? Uh, no, I think, uh, I mean, we can't tell what the future is going to be, but I think there's absolutely a path forward for the, the SNP. Uh, it is a path which I think means broadening the team. So we've had a very strong series of presidential style leaders. Uh, so I think it's important for the SNP now to present themselves more as a team. And I would also say to the party, let's not worry so much about the next day's headlines uh, and let's think a little bit into the future. So it doesn't matter if the headlines are bad tomorrow if we are having a conversation and making decisions which will position us well for three months time or for 12 months time or for three years time. That's the far more important thing. Um, Abby, do you, do you think it's the, the end of a, a, a period in the SNP's I, history that you'll maybe not see again? I do agree with Stephen. Obviously, there has been a, a 
During the debates, I have noticed that a lot, all three contenders have talked about decentralisation of power to the membership. There has been a really big push for, you know, they want to put more power in the membership hands, and I think that that is a response to, you know, the presidential style and the way that the SNP has been ran for a while, and I do think that that is a big change that we're going to see in the future. In a sentence. Yeah, I, I mean, I, the thing I'm interested in, is the SNP up for this big change that Stephen talks about? Uh, does it really want to kind of have a major evaluation about the way it does independence, yeah. or is it just going to carry on with the kind of comfort food approach? And I'm really interested to see what they. We'll have to wait and see. But thank you all very much indeed for joining us.